Color grading is where you get to seal the deal on how your video looks and feels. It can be the difference between your final export hitting just right or feeling completely off. It's safe to say that color grading is an extremely important part of the video creation process, but sometimes it can feel like the most painful part. But today, I'm here to change that. I'm gonna walk you through my simple three-step color grading process that works on any shot from any camera. So without further ado, let's dive in. All right, so here we are inside of Premiere Pro. And just before we get started, I wanna make sure that you have the color panel open. So if you don't see this uh, color panel over here on the right-hand side open, you wanna come over to Window, and then you wanna make your way down to Lumetri Color. Something will change when you click this, and then let's say it opened up next to Essential Sound. You wanna click on Lumetri Color, and you are now good to go. All right, now Lumetri Color is open. Let's get started on this color grade. So what you're seeing on screen now is the clip that we are going to be color grading. It's a shot of Amanda at a waterfall here in Bali. And that's it, there's not much more to it. I really like the composition of it. However, you can see that this was shot in log, so it's super flat, there's hardly any contrast or depth to this image at all. And of course, there's more or less no color, except this weird green cast over our shot. So the first thing that we're gonna do is correct our footage. And I'm gonna be able to do this using a custom conversion LUT, because what we wanna do essentially is take our footage from log, which is this faded, desaturated looking video, into something that's usable and looks somewhat true to life. So to be able to do this, what I'm gonna do is open up our Lumetri Color tab over here on the right, and then open up Basic Correction, which is the first tab, come over to Input LUT, and then hit Custom. Once you click on Custom, you then wanna navigate over to where your LUTs are going to be located on your computer. And just a heads up, if you don't have any conversion or grading LUTs, I would strongly recommend to pick yourself up some. You can check out my cinematic LUTs linked below. They are the LUTs that I use on every single one of my clips that you've ever seen, either on this YouTube channel, my Instagram pages, or my TikTok account. So if you like the looks and colors that you see over there, these are the exact LUTs I use, and I'm about to show you exactly how I use them. However, this workflow is also achievable with any other LUTs that work as good as mine do. Back to our workflow. Once you've navigated over to your correction LUTs, you then want to apply one. For me, I have got a handful to choose from. The first one on the list is log to rec 709, which is exactly what we wanna do, but then there are two more to choose from. So I've got this conversion LUT here, which is taking your footage that is overexposed to rec 709. And then the final one is taking your footage that might be underexposed to rec 709. And the reason I have these different LUTs is because maybe you shot a little bit too dark or maybe you shot a little bit too bright when you were shooting your log footage. Well, these LUTs are designed to help you out and make sure that you can recover that footage and you can still get some pretty good results. So the shot we're color grading today is just going to require the log to Rec. 709. It's not too bright, it's not too dark. So all I'm gonna do is hit open and now our footage looks a lot more true to life, which is great. And that is step one out of the way. You wanna be taking your log footage from looking really flat and desaturated over to a workable color space. For us, that's Rec. 709, and now we can move on to step number two. So now that our footage looks a lot more true to life, we can start applying some adjustments and give it a little bit more of a stylistic touch. The first thing I wanna do is make my way over to Window and then come down to Lumetri Scopes and make sure I have this in Enabled. Once that opens up, I'm gonna right click on any gray area and just make sure that I have waveform enabled. This is the only one we're gonna be using today. Now having a look at the waveform on the left hand side, you can see that we have a lot of information in the bottom half of our waveform and not all that much in the top half. Indicating to me that we have a little bit of a dark image. Maybe I should have used the underexposed conversion light that I mentioned before. However, we're here and it's not too dramatic and it's quite an easy fix. So to get this image up to looking really nice and perfectly exposed, I'm gonna make my way back over to the basic correction tab and then just look at increasing the highlights and increasing the shadows ever so slightly. If I increase the shadows like crazy, we're gonna to start to get 
a little bit more of a faded look on our shot, which is not the look we are after at all. So I'm gonna go pretty easy on the shadow sliders, but I'm definitely gonna be increasing those highlight sliders. And as you can see now, we've lifted quite a lot of information up on our waveform and our image is looking way better. So now with that out of the way, let's add some style to this grade. What I'm gonna do is come down into the creative panel right here and then open up this look dropdown table and hit custom. This is where we're gonna be applying one of my grading LUTs to start really sealing in and locking in our look and style on this shot. Once again, if you don't have my cinematic LUTs, of course, you can get them down below or you can use your own or you can even use the ones inside of Premiere Pro already. So for this shot, let's uh, let's think about where we are we're in the we're in the jungle we're in a waterfall so maybe jungle or moody might look really good here let's see what jungle looks like okay it doesn't look too bad we can toggle the uh, LUT on or off just by using this little switch here so we can toggle off and then back on it looks pretty nice let's then have a look at moody Okay, I'd have to say overall, I prefer how moody looks. If we turn moody off and back on, I feel like it's a little bit deeper and darker and I like the way that looks on our footage. You can also see that it has slightly adjusted our waveform over on the left-hand side, making things just a little bit darker. So to counteract that, we've got two options. We can either adjust the intensity of the LUT just down here on this intensity slider by backing it off to the left or increasing it on the right. If we increase it on the right, it's gonna give us more of the LUT we just applied. Obviously, if we move it to the left, it's gonna do the exact opposite by taking off more of the LUT. I'm actually quite happy with how things look at 100. However, I am gonna come back to basic correction and look at increasing the shadows just a little bit. Now with that out of the way, I could be wrapping up step number two here. I'm pretty happy with how our clip is looking, but I wanna add just a little bit more of a stylistic approach. And I don't wanna make this video all about my LUTs and how good they work on your footage. So I wanna show you a handful of techniques that you'll be able to apply to any one of your shots to give them a little bit more spice. The first one is adding a little bit of blue into our shadows. What I'm gonna do is come down to our color wheels and match section right here. And then I'm gonna make my way over to the shadows wheel right here and just click and drag a little bit of blue into the shadows. You'll notice here, especially in Premiere Pro, that if you just add a little bit of color into your image, you'll actually get quite a significant change. If we just turn this off and back on, you can see a bit of a blue hue is added to our shot when it's on. And when I turn it off, you can see a less of a blue hue is added. So I much prefer how this looks with a little bit of blues in the shadows. And I think it gives it an even more moodier feeling. Now, the second thing I want to walk you through quickly is a curve. A look that I'm absolutely in love with when I'm color grading is a very slight fade on the shadows. And to achieve this, all we're going to do is add one point here and one point here. And then we're going to come down to the bottom left-hand corner of our tone curve and just raise it up a little bit. Now you don't wanna go crazy here as things can get out of hand pretty quickly. So we're just looking to raise it ever so slightly and this just helps give a nice little bit of a cinematic fade on our shot and I really love the way this looks. And there we go, that is step two out of the way. We've now added our stylistic approach to our color grade, but now it's time to move on to step number three and that is masking. One of the biggest differences between beginner color graders and professional color graders is their masking workflow. And while I won't be deep diving into all the things you can do with masking inside of Premiere Pro for color grading, today I at least wanna show you a handful of masks that I would look to add to this shot to really enhance it. So what I wanna do is make my way over to effect controls to make sure I can see this, and then make my way back over to the Lumetri color tab, click on this drop down menu here and hit add Lumetri color effect. Now over on the left hand side, you can now see that I have two Lumetri colors. What I'm gonna do is I will toggle off the first Lumetri color effect just to make sure that it's not the one I'm affecting. So this is our grade. This is our base grade with our stylistic approach on it. And then if I toggle this one off or on, Nothing happens because I haven't made any adjustments to it. So the first mask I wanna add is a vignette to this shot. And to do this, what I wanna do is make my way over to the ellipse mask and then simply draw a nice big ellipse over our shot, making sure that I am 
sort of positioning this well because we're gonna be selecting the outside of this mask and then making it darker. I don't want to, for example, include Amanda in the mask and make her darker. If anything, I'm making this mask to help her stand out from the shot. So I would say here is probably a pretty good spot. I'm then gonna make my way down to feather. I'm going to increase this significantly, especially when you're masking in video, you wanna make sure that there are no sort of like hard edges anywhere um, because things are moving and it looks really cheap and nasty. So make sure that your feather is quite big. And then I'm also gonna make this mask expansion a little bit bigger as well to kind of give me a little bit more space on the inside of our shot. I'm then going to click the inverted uh, checkbox right there. And now I can make my way into basic correction and look at dropping the shadows. And you'll see if I dramatically affect it, you can see that we're only changing the outside of this mask. So obviously I'm going to undo that exposure change right there. But we definitely will significantly drop the shadows, I would say. If we uh, then counteract that by increasing the highlights, as I don't particularly wanna make the waterfalls too dark here, you can see that if I toggle this Lumetri color effect off and back on, it's actually quite a significant change and I'm pretty happy with how things are looking. So that's our first mask out of the way. And since this is a little bit of a static shot, if you will, not too much is moving. We don't have to look at tracking or moving our vignette whatsoever as our camera moves through the scene. However, our next mask, we're definitely gonna have to do that. So I'm gonna close up this first Lumetri color effect, well, not our first Lumetri color effect, but our first mask. And then we are going to come back over to Lumetri color and add another Lumetri color effect. I'm then gonna click on the ellipse mask again. I'm gonna make this one a bit of a different size. And this time I'm going to be targeting this bush in the, uh, in the bottom corner. However, I don't want to include Amanda in this mask once again. So we're just going to add a few more little dots around that mask and make sure that Amanda is all clear. I'm then going to increase the feather as per usual. And we are also gonna look at slightly decreasing the expansion to make our selection just a little bit smaller. Now I'm gonna zoom out of our little preview window here and, whoop, and just make sure, I'm gonna add another dot here and another point there, and just make sure that we're not cutting off any of our bush down here. I can then resize that to fit. And now I'm gonna make my way into the curves tab and look at decreasing the oranges and yellows. I find these a little bit distracting in our shot, so I kinda wanna kill them off just a little bit. And then we could also probably hit this with a little bit of a shadow down highlights down as well, just to kind of help this stand out a little bit less. Now, the reason I wanted to make sure Amanda wasn't included in this mask is because by decreasing the oranges, yellows, and maybe even the greens a little bit here, it's probably gonna affect her skin tone and I don't wanna be doing that. So now if we have a look at this back, we can see that Amanda's hand sort of goes into this mask just a little bit. So we can look at fixing that quite easily just with a mask path. I'm gonna make my way back over to effect controls and hit toggle animation on mask path and then click on mask again. Make sure that this is covering everything we need to. Amanda's hand's just on the edge there. And then I wanna make my way over to the end of the clip, which let's say we're gonna cut the clip off there. So make my way over to the end of the clip and then we can look at adjusting the mask location there. Now you'll see another keyframe just got added to our shot. I'm then gonna click on this keyframe and drag it to the end of our shot. And then if we look at this back, you can see the mask moves ever so slightly and it almost just tracks that bush in the bottom left-hand corner perfectly. All right, so with that mask out of the way, there's one more mask I wanna add to this shot. I'm gonna click on our shot here, make my way over to Lumetri Color, add Lumetri Color effect, close that one. And then we're gonna add another ellipse mask. We are then going to put this all the way down at the bottom, sort of even like 5% of our shot, increase the feather quite a lot, increase the expansion quite a lot, and then just look at decreasing the shadows to kind of give a, the idea that there's a little bit more depth in this shot and I am happy. And there we go. That is our color grade wrapped up in three simple steps. We have gone from log footage to converting it to a workable color space. From there, we have then added our stylistic changes and our stylistic look onto our shot. And then from there, we've gone ahead and added our masking. And now we have gone from this 
to this. And I hope now you've got a handful more color grading tools under your belt that you can take into your next project. Anyway, guys, that is gonna wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed, let me know in the comments down below. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world. And if you wanna continue learning about videography, color grading, photo editing, and photography, you can check out this video right here and I'll see you over there.